Good day, everyone. Hope everyone's staying cool. Since it's still well over 100 degrees in Arkansas, I figured I'd go ahead and make a video tonight. In front of you, you see a data set that was provided by Chattanooga PD in the crime analyst Jen. I will link to her video that she did for my class. Great video instructional educational crime analysis. So I'll link to that, but we're working on a paper with colleague Rick Derenfeld down at UTC. We're looking at some firearm related crime. And if you looked at Chattanooga's open data portal, they do have some crime available, but there's bigger issues within the data set, especially when it has their lat long. They intentionally change the offsets randomly. I'm sure there's some way that they do it, but you can't just go out and use their lat long provided on the crime itself. With that, it doesn't include if there was a weapon used or not. Given the CJIC grant that we're on and working on, I wanted to specifically look at firearms with that. The data set you see in front of you is from 2016 to 2019. With that, the older data, specifically 2016, does not actually contain a latitude and longitude. Very common across RMS systems as you shift and go further back. It's not always going to have that automatic geocoding ability to pull the latitude and longitude for address information. With that, you can see even over here in the case number, there might be some duplicates in the case number based on the description, but you can see based on the offense description itself, there are differences in it. So I wanted the offenses per incident type of situation to pull all of it so we can tease out and look at different types of firearm related crimes in Chattanooga. With that, if I scroll over and you'll see the big issue, and I was very curious to see if I could just use newer data to essentially read geocode older data that doesn't have latitude and longitude provided. You can see if I scroll down, we have that available. The cool part is we actually have the address to work with. So what I wanted to try and kind of I was curious to see if it worked is can I use the VLOOKUP to take the address that we have and then just match it and pull out the latitude and longitude from newer incidents and apply it to older addresses. If we look at crime data in general, we expect there's to be uh, commonalities, similarities. We know crime clusters with that. We have specific risky addresses, risky points, and they're likely to show up over time. I don't expect all of them to come back and have a latitude and longitude, but with that, I expect some to match and make the time spent geocoding or trying to pull these out, not as time intensive and tedious because we all hate that at the end of the day when we have to go in and manually geocode some even after creating an address locator. So with that, I'm going to clean up this file a little before getting into uh, the nulls and lat long. To do that, for the purposes of this video, I don't need the street name, the block, zip, city, state. I can always add this back in at a later time. For right now, I'm just primarily interested in the address itself. Old school, you used to have to concatenate all this together or tease it apart, depending on what you were trying to do geocoding wise. With that, I'm going to delete those. Here you can see that I have some cleaning up I need to do. Primarily, I need to make it proper so it's all capitalized in the front. You can see some up here have upper only. You see some periods and all of that. So some easy and quick ways to do it is just to find and replace. For the periods, I want Excel to find that, replace it with nothing. So it got rid of those for me. And I know because I've messed with this data set before, there are a couple places that have just two spaces where I want one. Really just cleaning it up, nothing crazy with that. Do it twice just to be safe. And we're good to go there. Next, the big step would be then to make a proper address. So address proper. And all this is going to do in Excel is if you type proper, is take your text field and make it into proper. So you have a capital M for Montview and then drive is capitalized as well. Flash fill that down. Remember, if I click on any one of these, it still has the formula in it that I use. I just get in the habit of copying it after I know I'm happy with it and then pasting it with the values itself to where it maintains this, just that. Now we're good to go. We have our data here. I'm gonna go ahead and sort it just to make it a bit easier from a talking perspective. So I come up here and go to sort and filter, custom sort, and I wanna do it based on the proper address. My data has headers, so I'm gonna check that. Address proper, A to Z, and we're good to go. As so if I scroll back over, you can see we have some, that first one's a good example. We have a newer one from 2018 that does have a latitude and longitude. And we have one from 2016 that does not, same address. And that's what we're tr truly trying to look at and pull out and make our lives easier. So I'm gonna make two sheets down here. One's just gonna be for our nulls. 
That's the ones that do not have a latitude and longitudes. These are going to be the ones that do have lat and long, but I'm going to remove the duplicates. So no duplicates. Again, keeping my main data set intact. So if I do have an issue with my null or lat and long, I can always come back to this one. With that, at this point, all I need to do is filter. So if I come up here and you can see if I'm missing a latitude or longitude there in both, I'm not going to have just one or the other. So if I come up here and you can see everything's selected, if I scroll to the bottom, I'm going to uncheck the blanks and nulls. So I'm left only with the rows, the cases that actually have a latitude and longitude. Came back to A1, control shift down our arrow right, copy this, and I'm going to paste it into the lat long one. We're good to go here. The next step would be, and you can see some of the issues with uh, even Martin Luther King here, I need to remove some duplicates. So if I already have this in the sorted order. I'm gonna come up here, go into data, remove duplicates. I want to unselect all. The only field I want to remove duplicates based off of is that proper address itself. So I go ahead and do that. It removes 564 rows or incidents or offenses itself, leaving just under 2000 unique addresses that we're gonna to try to use to our benefit. So here we have a good reference point. We can use our address proper, lat long to bring into our nulls. Now in here, coming back up in the main data set to our latitude and longitude, this time going to unselect all, come down to the bottom, hit just our null ones itself. You can see much smaller data set. And I'm going, since this is already highlighted and to our benefit, there's nothing below it. Control C to copy. And you can see these break lines, so it's identifying that it's not gonna pull everything over. Come over to cell A1, Control V, paste it. And you can see here, lat, into, lat long are all null. So I'm just highlighting that, deleting it all out. With that, we want to use this table over here to our advantage and try to pull that over to the ones that we do not have information for. So to do that, I'm going to use the VLOOKUP command. My lookup value is going to be my proper address, M2. The table array that I'm going to look up, I'm going to come over to my Latin long one, highlight the top row, go down, and then I'm gonna hit a comma again. And if I come back over to the null one, it's asking for what column do I want it to return. I want the first one to be the latitude itself. So I hit two, close that off. And you can see it brings that over for us. With that, I'm going to put in a couple dollar signs to lock the table itself. So it always can come back to these as a range and it makes life easier. So now when I flash fill downwards or autofill, it's going to pull ones over for us. If I come over what one broad street, come over, you can see if I go to the top, a little bit of a rounding difference, but we're good to go there in terms of pulling that over. Similar, all I have to do now is pull this over to get the longitude. Now you might look at that and like, damn, it's actually the same one over here. All you have to do is come back to the original formula you just want to pull the longitude, which was in column three. Hit enter. When I say column three, remember I highlighted these three here in each really count one, two, three. It's using column M, our address proper, as the lookup array. Then it's going to pull back column N and O. This would be two and three based on what you tell it to pull back for you. Go through and have those go ahead and update for you. You can see pretty good job going through. There's a did I manage to get all of them? Which would be very impressive, but I haven't checked or anything like that. But now you have a full data set to where you can take out the nulls if you wanted to in this data set, and you could pull in and recombine these into a full data set to where you would have a full data set. You can take it right into Microsoft Excel and map the data. If you remember in a prior video, I also showed how you can do your ArcGIS add-in to where all, I'm, all you would have to do at this point, remember this has no duplicates, so you actually remove incidents. You'd wanna take your nulls and the full data set from here, combine it into a fourth one to where you have a full data set all over again. And if you're confused on what I mean by that, 
Let's just go ahead as an example. I'm highlighting this whole null one. Copy. Going to create a new sheet. Paste these into here. The only difference is now, since in the lat longitude, I have the null highlighted. I'm going to select all, come down, get rid of the blanks and nulls, hit OK. Instead of cell A1, I'm going to come down to that first row of data, go across and highlight these, copy. And since the headers are all the same, I don't have to worry about too much. I just come to the bottom of N under that last row and paste the data that already had a latitude and longitude in it. So after that, it's fairly easy to where if you wanted to map this data, and there's a couple of different ways in Excel you can do it. If you have Windows, you can go up to Insert. You can do a 3D map from here. If you've also tested and used ArcGIS, you can show your map forward and give it a second so we'll probably try to log in. I'm hoping it's still connected to my prior account and the video I did a couple days ago. But all you have to do is connect to your enterprise itself or your license for the most part, and then it will map the data for you. No big ask from there, relatively straightforward with it. Go ahead and hit sign in. Hopefully it pulls up UAGOS. Yep, good there. And with that, I'm just gonna pull this over. I'm gonna add in a layer from my Excel. Sheet three, since I didn't rename it down here, it picked up the latitude and longitude coordinates for us. It knows the spatial reference. Hit add to map, it's mapping that for us. And you can see down here, we now have a lot of points with firearm incidents or offenses in Chattanooga from 2016 through 2019. Now again, there's plenty you can do in ArcGIS in Excel. You just have to control the layers on your end. I'm still getting used to it. I just wanted to do another one in it. But with it, I thought it was a pretty cool tutorial video. I was primarily interested in, could I use fresh, newer data to generate latitude and longitude for older fields that did not have it? I've run into this issue with historical data and honestly have spent many, many hours going back to early 90s data and having to read geocode it. It's a nice way to kind of go about it, see if it worked. It's worked this time. I would still want to spend some time to go through, make sure it was all as planned. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, issues, reach out. I just thought it was a cool little trick that I used to make life a bit easier on this end when it came to spatially referencing data. With that, reach out. Until next time, take care.